Good evening. It's Saturday the 21st of January and it's time for the news on RIC2. President Anastasiades today reviewed the outcome of the three-day meetings of technocrats at Mont Pelleron on the issue of security arrangements after a solution. Negotiator Andreas Mavroyanis briefed President Anastasiades on the result of the work done by the technocrats. Turkish Cypriot media reported that community leader Mustafa Kenji was also briefed by his negotiator Ozdil Nami. The technocrats representing the two Cypriot communities, the three guarantor powers, Greece, Turkey and Britain, and the European Union, put on paper questions on what was needed to be done after a solution to the Cyprus problem and in relation to safeguarding security and the instruments to achieve that. The government spokesman has already said that the parties disagreed on the instruments to safeguard external security of the Cypriot state. President Anastasiades and Turkish Cypriot leader Mustafa Kinji are scheduled to meet again on Thursday for the first time after the Mont Pelleron meetings and are expected to discuss how to proceed in their negotiations so as to achieve progress on pending issues. The Turkish media said that they will also discuss how to adjust the system of security to current conditions. President Anastasiades has said that decisions about reconvening the Geneva Conference on Cyprus will be made in consultation with the United Nations and the guarantor powers. Turkey insists on keeping troops in Cyprus and retaining guarantee rights, but has also raised a new issue giving Turkish citizens the right of free travel and trade and establishing residence and business. A girl opposition party, the only party that supports the negotiations for a Cyprus solution, has said that the process that led to the Geneva conference was a move in the right direction. A girl's press spokesman, Stefano Stefano, in announcing the conclusions of a review by the party's central committee, said the handling by President Anastasiades has been generally a correct one. He added that the Geneva outcome proved the assessment of the party that an agreement would be difficult to achieve, but there have been three positive results, the exchange of maps, the start of negotiations on the future of guarantees and further progress on the issue of governance. A girl also urged all other parties to behave in a serious and responsible manner as the negotiations are entering into a crucial stage. The government has said that the new American administration would like a further strengthening of bilateral relations with Cyprus in all fields of cooperation, especially on issues of security. Government spokesman Nikos Christodoulidis has said that the role of the United States in efforts to solve the Cyprus problem will continue by supporting the process underway for an agreement reunifying the island in a federal state. Christodoulidis also said that he met with Russian ambassador Stanislav Osachi yesterday, during which they discussed press reports to the effect that Russia has played a negative role on the Cyprus issue, which have annoyed Moscow. He added that he could assure that relations with Russia are good and appealed on behalf of President Anastasiades to all be very careful when making assessments which do not correspond to reality. Turkey's Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu has said that Greece is the last country in the world that could be justified to criticize Turkey on the Cyprus issue. He was commenting on a statement by Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras, who had urged Turkey to behave in a responsible way and leave aside its rhetoric on Cyprus. Cevusoglu said that no country and no organization can criticize Turkey or the Turkish Cypriots. Turkey invaded Cyprus in 1974, occupying 37 percent of its territory and keeps up to 40,000 troops on the island. Chavusoglu repeated Ankara's position that it will not withdraw all of its troops from Cyprus after a solution is found and will retain guarantee rights, giving it the right of intervention. Turkey's claims are being rejected by Greece and the Cypriot government. Sixteen people were killed and about 40 injured after a bus carrying Hungarian students burst into flames on a highway in northern Italy. The bus went off the road near a highway exit close to the city of Verona overnight. The local highway police chief said it was carrying mostly teenage students, teachers and parents. 
The National Police said that the bus catch fire on impact with a pillar. The police also said that no other vehicles seem to have been involved in the accident and that the bus went off the road by itself. Four people were pulled out alive from the wreckage of a luxury hotel that was demolished by a deadly avalanche, bringing the number of survivors to nine. The National Fire Service said that two men and two women were extracted from the shattered ruins of Hotel Reggio Piano overnight after hours of painstaking digging by firemen. Around 15 people are still unaccounted for. New U.S. President Donald Trump has declared that crushing radical Islamist terrorism is his administration's highest priority. A statement by the White House said to defeat and destroy ISIS and other radical Islamic terror groups, the new administration will pursue aggressive joint and coalition military operations when necessary. It also said that the Trump administration will work with international partners to cut off funding for terrorist groups, to expand intelligence sharing and to engage in cyber warfare to disrupt and disable propaganda and recruiting. The statement came as an announcement by the Pentagon said that a U.S. airstrike targeting an al-Qaeda training camp in Syria's Idlib province killed more than 100 militants. The Turkish parliament has backed a plan to strengthen the powers of the presidency, paving the way for a referendum on the issue in spring, which could allow President Tayyip Erdogan to become an executive president and to stay in office until 2029. The constitutional reform bill was approved overnight with 339 votes in the 550-member assembly, nine more than needed to go to a public vote. A 34-year-old woman from the Czech Republic was today remanded in custody by Alarnica court pending investigation into charges of electronic fraud. Police said the woman was arrested last night as she was about to fly to Amsterdam. She is said to have created a website for the sale of goods to Asian countries, but she allegedly posted false data such as false address and telephone numbers, making communication with her impossible. Police said that her actions amounted to forgery, electronic fraud and stealing crimes which were committed between October 2015 and September 2016. And now a look at the weather. It will be mostly fine tomorrow. Winds will be light to moderate northwesterly to northeasterly for 3 to 4 over slight seas. Temperatures will reach 16 Celsius inland, 18 in coastal areas and 5 over the mountains. Fine weather is expected over the next three days with temperatures going up slightly. The depth of snow is 70 centimetres on Mount Olympus and 60 on Trodos Square. That's all for today. Join us tomorrow again for more news in English. Have a very good evening.